All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome. This is Advanced Electrical Networks uh, Lecture Four. A quick recap of what we were doing uh, the last time around. Uh, we saw that if you had a network with only bilateral elements, namely things like uh, resistors, inductors, and capacitors, where you can relate uh, either the uh, the instantaneous voltage and the instantaneous current uh, by uh, uh, a resistance uh, or uh, the uh, voltage phasor with the current phasor by an impedance, then uh, you can within course interchange the location of the excitation and the response uh, as illustrated in this picture. Uh, and uh, we saw last time that you can use Telegon's theorem to show that uh, V2 by I1 is uh, the same as V1 hat by I2 hat in the network on the right. Hmm? Now, uh, so apart from uh, you know the mathematical curiosity of this and uh, 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 its elegance, uh, it has got a very practical application and uh, that application is the following. Many times uh, uh, particularly uh, you will appreciate this when uh, we start doing noise calculations. Uh, many times it turns out that uh, you are interested in transfer functions from multiple inputs to the same output. Okay? Now, that you know uh, the simple minded way of solving such a problem would be uh, the first instinct as uh, many of you pointed out in the last class would be to use uh, uh, network analysis to find the transfer functions from one source to the output one at a time using superposition. Correct? Uh, it turns out uh, as we again discussed in the last class that uh, there is a cleverer way of doing this if you exploit the fact that uh, the network only consists of elements uh, where you can relate the branch currents to the branch voltages uh, uh, you know in this fashion. Hmm? And uh, that is the following. So, you excite the output port right, and then look at the voltages or currents you know uh, through the independent sources inside the network and uh, this way you solve the network only once, but in one shot we are able to get all the transfer functions that we want without having to evaluate the network multiple times. Okay? Now, uh, that is uh, you know one of the advantages of uh, or one of the practical uses of uh, uh, reciprocity. Uh, well, there is a still an issue and that is that uh, you know uh, while uh, this is great, uh, you know most practical networks that we deal with as uh, you know analog circuit designers are uh, networks that consist of control sources, right? Uh, voltage control, voltage sources, voltage control, current sources, uh, CCVS and VCCS and clearly there every branch voltage cannot be expressed as a linear function of its branch current because the branch voltage could be dependent on uh, uh, you know the voltage across some other branch if it is a voltage controlled voltage source and, and so on. Right? So, this is a great uh, seemingly useful idea unfortunately its uh, applicability seems to be limited in practice simply because you know we do not deal all the time with networks where every branch voltage is related to its branch current. Hmm? So, uh, one way around it as we saw last time was uh, to recognize that the problem with reciprocity as we saw it occurred only as far as the So, this is I1, this is V2 and this is the network N and as far as the, uh, the branches where you have I believe we call these A and A prime and B and B prime, this is V B prime and this is uh, I B prime, I mean sorry, this is V A and V B, this is I B uh, which happens to be G M times V A. Okay. 
okay this is rk or zk whatever hmm? uh so when we did the uh, uh, did a uh, try to relate the port currents of when we uh, wrote the uh, telegon's theorem we found that oh well it all works out except for the contribution of this control source and uh, we said oh well uh, uh, you know uh, we found uh, within ports a hack right we said oh well it seems pretty straightforward to fix that problem and that is well we just move the control source this way so so this is vb hat and this current ia hat is what did we see last time gm times vb hat right if we did this then uh, you know uh, all the terms other than the port voltages and port currents when you write uh, telegon's theorem just simply cancel out and uh, we see that like with a network with bilateral elements only uh, we again have v2 by i1 is v1 hat by i2 right so this network as you can see can you comment on whether this network and this network are the same are n and n hat the same they are not the same because we have taken that control source and flipped the controlled and the controlling ports right that seems intuitively reasonable because in this uh, in the network n you know signal flows from signal flows like this right and we have some transfer from v2 to i1 and if you want the same transfer from uh, i2 hat to v1 hat uh, it seems reasonable that the control source points the points the other way right so uh, i am going to just write down so please note that n hat and n are not the same however given n you know what comment can you make about n hat i mean is it like uh, rocket science to find n hat or what it is just a matter of flipping uh, the uh, the controlled and uh, controlling ports in the uh, uh, in n to arrive at is that clear people all right now if there were multiple voltage controlled current sources what comment uh, can you make about uh, uh, what are you going to do to derive n hat very good so if you have multiple voltage controlled current sources what you want to do is simply flip the orientation of all the voltage controlled current sources to derive this n hat and uh, uh, another uh, aspect that i would like to point out is that if g m is set to 0 right whether you have n or whether you have n hat please note that the port impedances at between uh, a a prime and b b prime remain the same is that clear so if you set g m to 0 
uh, what comment can we make about the impedance between A and A prime? It is an open circuit and uh, likewise between B and B prime, it is also an open circuit. Uh, what comment uh, can we make about n hat if we set gm to 0? It is the same. Is that clear? Very nice. So, uh, so therefore, in n if we had a voltage controlled current source. So, this is A, this is A prime, this is B, this is B prime, this is G M B A. Then in N hat we have A, A prime, B, B prime, B, B prime, this is G M. All right. Okay. Uh, now this is a voltage control current source. So I'm not going to sit. I mean, here we did the derivation and found this. You can do the same derivation for the other control sources. The, I'll give that as a part of the homework so that. Uh, you are convinced, but I am going to only put down the final result here. Let us uh, you know uh, use our intuition to figure out what we are going to do. That is uh, if the original network had a voltage controlled voltage source. So, this is V A, this is uh, mu times V A. Uh, what comment can we make about what we need to do in n hat, this is A, this is A prime, this is B, this is B prime. I mean we can derive it, but uh, uh, which I will leave uh, uh, for the homework, but uh, what should you intuitively expect based on our ex experience so far? Very good. So, uh, uh, remember the controlled and the controlling ports must be, must be interchanged. So, B, B prime must be the controlling port. And remember another aspect is that if mu is 0, you want the port impedances to all be the same. So, if mu is 0 between B and B prime in N, uh, what, uh, what comment can we make about the impedance we have? It is a short circuit. So, this must be the controlling port and must be a short circuit, all right. And uh, uh, so, this must be a current controlled source. Right, and uh, what must be uh, uh, there between A and A prime in n hat? Well, its impedance must be infinite when mu is zero. So therefore, this must be a con current controlled current source. So if this is I B hat, this must be mu times. All right. Uh, a common cause for confusion is the direction of uh, of the current and uh, what can we say about the direction of the current, how what is a good way of remembering what the direction is. Remember in the original network, if you yank V A up, so if V A increases, right, what happens to what tends to happen to V B? V B will increase assuming mu is positive. Hmm? Now, we turn the source the other way and so if V B increases, right, V A must tend to, must also tend to increase. So, if V B increases, I B that I B hat will tend to flow in that direction we have shown. For that direction, we must expect the voltage between A and A prime to increase and how will voltage across A and A prime increase? When you push current into A, correct? So, that is an easy way of remembering uh, you know what direction you need to put the, the current source. Is that clear? Okay. So, now uh, without further ado, let us uh, uh, write up 
the other cases. So, one is a I mean in fact, there is only one other case. What is that other case? Current control voltage source because the current control current source is uh, you know is the same as the voltage controlled voltage source right. You, uh, if you have a voltage controlled voltage source we replace it with a current controlled current source in the opposite area in the uh, with uh, controlled and controlling ports flipped. Likewise, if you had a current controlled current source you would replace it with a voltage controlled voltage source with uh, the controlling and the controlled ports flipped. If you have a, a current controlled current source so this is i a this is mu times i a this is b and b prime what should we do this is a a prime sorry this is a current controlled voltage source so this is say z times i a b b at ok. Let us see what uh, uh, we should do. Any thoughts? So, which is the controlled port and which is the controlling port? B is the controlling port uh, and uh, what comment can we make about uh, uh, the uh, what kind of controlling port uh, is, uh, is the voltage across B controlling it is a current controlled port. So, this is I B at and what comment can we make about the controlled port it, it must be a voltage source. this is uh, z times all right okay so so therefore in summary if you have an arbitrary linear network now because the four I mean the three uh, RLC uh, passive elements plus uh, all the four control sources right. With these four you can form any uh, linear network that you want correct. Now, if you are interested in finding the transfer functions from multiple inputs inside the linear network to a single output right. You, you do not need to despair all that you need to do is what what is the uh, uh, to find the transfer function from multiple inputs in n to a single output what should you do what is the first step derive n hat from n correct and how do you derive n hat from n? Well, you simply look at this table, right? Uh, all the bilateral elements, namely the R, L, and C, remain the same. And all you need to do is flip the the control sources as per this table, right? Which you know how to derive, okay? And therefore, you have n hat. Then what do you do? So, excite the out, excite the output of which port of which network excite the output of n hat right with the appropriate current or voltage excitation that the situation warrants and uh, 
uh, right measure current or voltage right through or across the independent Does it make sense? Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, as he points out, I mean, you know, it doesn't make sense to keep calling n hat, n hat, n hat, right? So, it's sufficiently it seems to be sufficiently nifty and important to have a name, right? So, uh, uh, n hat. I mean, you can see that the ports in n and n hat are reciprocal, except that n hat is not the same as n, but can be derived from n. So, n and uh, n hat are called inter reciprocal networks. Okay, and this is called inter reciprocity. 